So we're going to ride three days on the Great Allegheny Passage. I have to get all this stuff into these two pannier bags and maybe this trunk rack. That's all we're taking. I think I've got my packing all figured out. It doesn't seem like I have too much, I hope, but uh, I'll have to tell you after I drag this weight for three days on my bike. So are you basically going to wait till the very last minute to pack your stuff for a big I'm, road trip? I'm going to do it today. <laughs> I'm going to get ready. Are you going to do it today? You're not going to wait till 8 o'clock tonight? Well, that's today. There you go. What are you talking about? Here we are. Look at us. A beautiful day to start out. We're going to go 35 miles from Pittsburgh to West Newton. Here we are. Ready all, to go. All packed up. Point State Park is the western terminus of the Gap. It contains the footprints of long gone Fort Duquesne and Fort Pitt, as well as the remaining Fort Pitt blockhouse built in 1764, and the oldest authenticated structure west of the Allegheny Mountains. Well, here we are at mile, the ending point of the Great Allegheny Passage, but for us it's our starting point. And it's just a beautiful day. And we have downtown Pittsburgh right next to us. We got the chance to drive to ride around downtown Pittsburgh with yeah. our bikes because we were I got, lost. Lost. <laughs> I got us lost again. We don't have that on video, thank God. In this video, we're going to show you all the sights and things to see along the Great Allegheny Passage over a three-day trip. If you have the time and you want to cross the river, you might want to stop at Station Square. It's a former passenger station built in 1901, and I hear that the Grand Concourse is worth going to see. You'll need to cross the Smithfield Bridge to get there. We didn't have time today, so unfortunately, we can't show you. Throughout this video, I'll highlight the mileage. Take note that the mileage is counting down, not up. That's because Cumberland is considered the starting point and Pittsburgh the ending. After winding around Pittsburgh for three or four miles, we reached the Hot Metal Bridge. It's named this because the floor and sides were lined with fire brick, and that prevented the heat of the molten iron that was transported across the bridge from melting the bridge if a car spilled. Okay, we just crossed the Hot Metal Bridge. I think we're out of what the majority of what you'd call downtown Pittsburgh. I'm not sure if we're still officially on the Three River Heritage Trail or we're officially on the Gap yet, but they're one and the same for a while. I think I'm about to cross into what is now officially just Gap, not Gap and Three Rivers Heritage. I was kind of wondering what all these people were doing in the middle of nowhere, staring up the hill with their camera equipment and whatever. I found out later they're looking for bald eagles. a little tip. If you're hungry and you're looking for something to eat, you might want to get it before you leave the area where this big bridge is because you're going to go about another 10 or 15 miles before you find anything else.
The Pump House landmark was the center of the 1892 Battle of Homestead. It was here the locked out and striking laborers clashed with Pinkerton agents hired by Carnegie Steel. Side of McKeesport, we're on the road, but you can see the sign is fairly well marked, so at least you know you're going in the right direction. You might want to take a stop at the Boston Trailhead. It features the last remaining 40-foot shorty boxcar in the P&LE system. It was built in 1929 and restored in 2010. All right, I guess this is Boston, and the trailhead is right there. And we're at this Betsy shop. Um, you can see we're all set up, waiting to have our lunch. Pretty little fountain to stare at. And Randy eating his chips. So what do you think about your ride so far? It's been really nice. It's, you know, some of the scenery is a little Catching the garden to buy some old steel on the house and some scrap places, but the ride is nice and I think we're just getting into the, the better part of the ride. Oh yeah, definitely. I was thinking it would, might be a little bit prettier. We had a couple of great sandwiches and the Betsy shop was definitely a place we'd stop again. The White Waterfall is likely the remnants of an old mine. It's also called the Aluminum Waterfall. At the Red Waterfall, it's the result of abandoned mine drainage. The water here is acid and iron rich, so it stains the rocks rust red. It's been orange since the late 1930s. It smells like the Red Waterfall. Yep. Well, we finally arrived in West Newton, our stopping point for the night. If you have a second, you might want to stop in the railroad station. It's a replica of the 1910 P and L E train station that once stood here. So when you pull up to the bed and breakfast, you can put your bike in the bike barn and it'll be locked at night. And you can't miss the place. It's right across from the West Newton station and they have 13 total rooms in four houses. Day two, we're gonna go 53 miles from West Newton to Confluence. Might get a little wet today. Okay, so this is our second day on the Great Allegheny Passage. That is true. And behind us is the bed and breakfast we just stayed at. It's supposed to rain today. We're hoping we can get some breaks from the rain, but I don't know, we'll see what happens. How was your sleep? How'd you sleep? I slept really good, actually. My 10 hours, I mean, I slept, yeah, we slept never slept that night. long. Trying to find a spot where we won't get wet if I'm going to trade out my coat. Probably as 
Cedar Creek Gorge. Oh, 21 miles in the rain to Camelsville. That's our stop for waiting the rain out for a minute. Oh, just a second rest from the rain by the peaceful waterfall. So, are you having fun yet? It's all right so far, but if it rains much harder. Yeah, we got to find a stop, so. Unfortunately, my rain gear is holding up so far. I got my fancy oh, legs God. Like yeah, we're showing some leg. It does look like it's raining yep. harder. Than what we've got. Oh, my arms are sore. Look at the old fogged up glasses again. No, they're not as bad as they were last time. No, they feel it. Do you see that sign back there where they said, like, last water, last everything till Connellsville? I guess they meant it. What are you talking about? Robots and unicorns? Yep. Can I go that way? Huh. Hort horses, I guess, do too. Huh. Only bikes and people on this side. Let's go do the West Yo Bridge Scenic River Overlook. Oh, it's nice to get off my bike for five seconds. On your way into Connellsville, you'll pass Braddock's 12th Camp. This is where General Braddock and volunteer aide-de-camp George Washington slept in late June 1755. They were headed to Pittsburgh to drive the French from the area. They were defeated, and Braddock didn't survive the battle. If you're hungry, you're going to want to look for food in Connellsville because there aren't going to be any trailside services between here and Ohio Pile, which is 17 miles. So here we are in our, where are we? Connellsville. Connellsville, it's a nice little, little town. Having a little snack. Absolutely. And sitting out behind the, what was this, a comfort inn? Yes. And having a nice view of the water. Um, this ride's not for the faint of heart, but I feel really good. Oh yeah, I don't know about, it's just take your time. It's, there's some hill, little hills, but it's not anything that's overly challenging, I guess. If you have time while you're in Connellsville, you might want to wander down Pittsburgh Street, also known as Millionaire's Row, to view the extent of the conspicuous wealth. You might also want to check out the Connellsville Canteen, which is a World War II museum and an extensive model railroad layout depicting the area.
Yeah, we're we are up pretty high now. Off the riverbank. It's gonna be even more fun with the extra weight. You need help on the other side? No, I was just gonna get the pedal. Yeah, I'll help you on the other side. Wait, let me come over. That's where you got whipped. Watch out there. Ohio Pile is the Native American name for white, frothy water. While you're here, get something to eat and take a side trip to see the falls. At the Falls Market, great sandwiches. If you're, unless you're a big eater, you can share, share a sandwich almost and fries. They're, well, they're huge, but we've worked up quite a appetite today. We've been 40 some mile, 40 miles, maybe a little bit more. Connellsville, I guess, is okay. You can probably get something there. But once you leave Connellsville, you are 18 miles, literally going uphill in the wilderness. So, I don't know. My comment is this is not for the faint of heart. And you better be in some pretty good shape or have a good um, electric pedal. Sometimes referred to as the Niagara Falls of Western Pennsylvania, Ohio Pile Falls are a 20-foot drop. Oh my, we're here. We're here, we made it 50 miles today. 50, 52, whatever. Yeah. Okay, this is our spot for tonight. Looks pretty, looks nice. Day three, 62 miles from Confluence to Cumberland. Well, here we are, day three, 60 miles, the longest part of the trip. I guess what, what doesn't kill you just makes you yeah. stronger. We're hoping it's not too much uphill, but we're not real optimistic about that. I like the idea of this three-day trip, and I might do it again, but we'll see what, how I feel when I get to the end of this, because <laughs> I woke up this morning going, there's only one way to go, but down that trail, 60 miles on your bike, no matter how you feel. So, <laughs> so we've left the Smith House Inn behind, had a lovely breakfast, oh, about quarter to nine right now, and we'll see how long it takes us to get to where we plan to have lunch, which is Myersdale. <laughs> I 
I'm saying we're at mile 100 of our 150 mile trip. So two thirds of it's down and one third to go. I guess we've got some pretty big hills to go up yet and then some fairly substantial downhills. So hopefully it'll even out and we'll be good to go. Not a bad spot for a stop. Now we're on a really interesting combination, the Pinkerton High Bridge, then we'll go through the Pinkerton Tunnel, and then we'll go through the Pinkerton Low Bridge. They're in really quick succession, it's really cool. You can tell by the trees we're going up in elevation, there's a lot more pines now. How far have we gone so far? We've been, let's say 20 miles or close to it. So, where were we? Camels? No. Where were we, we were in the kind of, um, um, confluence. <laughs> yes. So, we, we're hallucinating for all this riding. So yeah, we started this morning in Confluence and we haven't been past anything. So how many miles again was that? I think 19. So 19 miles you can plan on, bring your own stuff because you're not stopping anywhere. But we think we're just a mile or two from Rockwood. Um, I think the Castleman River is right behind us. You might be able to hear the water. It's nice and peaceful here. A couple of mosquitoes, but it's beautiful out here. Well, it's nice and cool, about the right temperature for, at least for me and riding, so. I'm happy with that. Nice sunshine today. Yeah, thank God. I had enough of the rain. The first train to cross the Salisbury Viaduct was in 1912 at 1,908 feet long and 101 feet above the Castleman River, US 219, and railroad tracks. It's one of the most distinctive structures on the Gap. At its time, it was a key engineering achievement of the Western Maryland Railway's Connellsville Extension.
As you pass by the Myrdsdale station, take a minute to walk through the caboose and take note of the cast concrete phone booth. Bowman Bridge is by far the oldest bridge on the trail, and it's in remarkably good shape considering it's a century and a half old. Listed on the National Register of Historic Places, it was moved to the trail in 2007 to get bikers across Scratch Hill Road. Viaduct is just a fancy word for long bridge, and the Keystone Viaduct is 910 feet long. It's a combination of truss bridge and deck plate girder viaduct and was completed in 2003. So where are we? Like two miles from the Continental Divide and we were just talking about would we drag all the stuff we've been dragging since we've been steady uphill for two days, yeah. <laughs> three days, three better days, part of yeah. three days. And I'd leave definitely several things home. Well we thought we were packing light, which we were compared to a normal vacation, but it's, you know, we, I probably like usual used about half of what I have. At the Eastern Continental Divide, no matter which direction you're coming from, you're going to be going downhill from here. The Eastern Continental Divide is a raised divide in the terrain of the eastern United States that separates the Atlantic Seaboard Watershed from the Gulf of Mexico Watershed. Well, we made it to the Eastern Continental Divide. Next stop is the Big Savage Tunnel. Look at the cool air coming out. It looks, looks ghostly. Cool. Looks ghostly. The Big Savage Tunnel opened in 1912 and is 3,294 feet long. That's the length of nine football fields. The Savage name came from an 18th century surveyor named John Savage. He led a surveying expedition in that area around 1736. During that winter, his survey team ran out of food and nearly starved to death in the cold and snow. In an act of almost unbelievable selflessness, John Savage offered to become the provisions his team needed to survive. But as his luck would have it, they were rescued before this drastic measure was taken. In honor of his heroic gesture, several nearby mountains, streams, and even a village bear the Savage name, as does the tunnel. This ride through the tunnel is playing back in real time. It took us about four minutes to get from end to end.
Well, if you look out over the landscape, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> we just cleared the big savage tunnel and it's just beautiful. I, I can't believe there's absolutely nobody here on a Sunday. No, no. It is a vacant. This last time we were here in the fall, there were a hundred people right here yeah. when we came through well, the tunnel. I'm betting the savage tunnel was 40 degrees or thereabouts inside. It was pretty cool. Um, yeah, it was pretty chilly. In 1760, tired of border violence between the colony settlers, the British Crown demanded that the parties involved hold to an agreement reached in 1732. So Mason and Dixon were asked to determine the exact whereabouts of the boundary between the two colonies. The line was marked using stones, with Pennsylvania's crest on one side and Maryland's on the other. The Borden Tunnel is 957 feet long. There were motion control lights installed in 2021, and it was a little bit weird going through here. We've been going steadily downhill since we reached the Continental Divide. To get up into Frostburg, you have to ride up this switchback. It's not part of the trail, so we just kept going. This looks like some of the cars of the Western Maryland Scenic Railroad that runs from Frostburg to Cumberland. For most of the first two days, we were wondering if we'd gone in the right direction. It was a gradual hill all the way from Pittsburgh up to the summit, and we thought, Maybe we'd gone the wrong way and should have come the other way and just gone uphill for a short while and then taken the gradual downhill the other 125 miles. Watching everyone else chug up the hill for 23 miles had us re revisit our thought of coming the other way. We certainly made the right choice in going from Pittsburgh to Cumberland. You just had to use your brakes all the time. There was no, not much pedaling to it. We. The Brush Tunnel is the only tunnel shared by both the railroad and the passage. You don't want to be in it when the train's coming through, and please heed the signs that asks you not to. Okay, so this really is Helmstedler's Curve. This famous railroad landmark is a sweeping 180 degree horseshoe curve, and it's named for the family whose farm it bisects. In 1912, workers excavating a cut for the Western Maryland Railway broke into a partially filled cave. The Smithsonian conducted an excavation between 1912 and 1916. Enough bones were found to reconstruct skeletons for a cave bear and a saber-toothed cat, and they're on permanent exhibit in the Ice Age Mammal Exhibit at the National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C.
Canal Place came into being in 1995. It wanted to build a tourist destination with the CNO Canal as the centerpiece. The Passage and Scenic Railroad came a bit later. But here we are at the end. Starting point zero. Okay, so we finished our ride. We're waiting for our, well, having our dinner our at a nice Italian restaurant. And then in the morning, we're going to get down our, our guy to take us back to Pittsburgh. And hopefully, we'll find the parking lot that we left the car in because I couldn't find my way out of the parking and lot. Deb has told me to be sure that we stop on a trail on the way home. <laughs> at least, at least two trails on the way home. Well, that's our trip. It was a great three days bikepacking, or we were we glamping because we stayed at bed and breakfast. Anyway, we had a wonderful time and we'd definitely do it again. Check out the trail guide before you go.